So, Josh, you know the the common complaint after this trailer, even from us, was like, oh, you know, they said gameplay, but it was, you know, it was mostly just felt like a CGI kind of thing, kind of trailer. But I rewatched this earlier, and I got started getting really hyped, dude, because I'm like, they have went above and beyond to confirm this is all in-game footage, everything you're seeing. And when you see what looks to be kind of like gameplay, but there's no UI on screen, they have confirmed that is actual in-game gameplay. And if you watch it, it's really impressive, and you think about playground games and what they've been able to do with technology. Ah, man, look! Look at this right here. We're watching this gameplay, throwing fireballs, countering attacks. I'm not I want trying. To, I want to play this game. Yeah. I'm not trying to sound at all negative. This is a huge, huge positive for me, and I'm not at all. I'm prefacing. I, I don't at all think just because of the Jack and the Beanstalk thing it reminds me of it. But this literally looks like a more realistic version of Shrek imagined in the game. I can see that, really. The visual yeah, style looks so much like that, but again, with a more realistic take, but yet it has some of that zaniness to it. And again, it's not just the, the Beanstalk stuff. Um, but Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Josh, because yeah. that's something I've actually really warmed up to. Uh, you and me both said when we watched this, we're like, is this just going to be like a Jack and the Beanstalk type game? Because like, that's not really what we thought of a fable, but then as I've kind of like marinated on it a bit and rewatched this, I'm like, if there is a big angle of, like, you know... I'm not saying this would be the whole game, but, like, if there's a big angle of, like, this is you taking on a giant in his home or, or, or like, I don't know, something with... I, I think it's neat. I think it's a new angle for Fable we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So I think it could really like it. I mean, obviously, we saw from earlier in the gameplay, she was fighting people the same size as her, right? Right. She was, she was down, like, in a bar with people the same size as her. So maybe this could just be one element, like, big element of the game, not the whole thing. Uh, but man, I feel like they na just absolutely nailed what I expected from Fable's comedy and style here with her seemingly... He talks about making a sandwich in the beginning of this, and then at the end, she's sitting on top of his broken glasses, and uh, she's eating a sandwich, which is... I don't know. She made one that's her size, which is, I thought, kind of interesting. I think if the sandwich was, like, giant, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, she definitely took you a sandwich. But <laughs> I don't know. The, the moment where she was about to say the F word, and then it went to the title card, I thought that was genius. Um... Other than there being like a literal minute or two of gameplay with UI on screen and them saying, hey, this is pressing this button, does this attack? Other than that kind of thing, mm -hmm. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm really excited for this game. I think what's keeping me from being super hype is just knowing how far away it is, right? Like if we just saw a 20, 30 minute deep dive and knew this was coming in six months, I would probably be really excited. But Josh, what are your thoughts on Fable after you've had time to sit on it? Well, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the same studio that's done the Forza games, correct? Forza Horizon. Forza yep. Horizon. Yeah, and guys, just looking at some of the past, just the last two, some of the last couple Horizon games we've gotten. Forza Horizon 3, for example, scored a 91 on Metacritic, and Forza Horizon 5 scored a 92. Um uh, that gets me very excited because, like Brian, like you said earlier, Forza Horizon 4 even got a 92. I'm seeing that now. But um, the, their game score, super high. And there is there there was shortly after the, the preview of that that came out where one of the guys, I, I'm paraphrasing, but one of the guys working on the game said basically the people that were saying that this isn't going to represent the final gameplay, this isn't actual gameplay and stuff like that, he said it was, like, quote, flattering, I think, basically. Yeah, like, they're really, like, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but behind the scenes, you know, on, on social media and stuff, they're really confident, yeah. and they're almost they're almost kind of coming off like they're laughing. Like, you guys are impressed that this is, you know, you're impressed with it as a trailer, but you don't think it's gameplay, but, yo, this is gameplay, and this game's a year or two out, yeah. and this is what it looks like, and we can do this, and you're going to be... It's flattering because you're going to be stoked. It presents a really exciting picture, right? Because like their games, the last several games have scored super high. And of course, there's a little bit of uh, caution there because this is new territory for them. It's not just like a new type of game for them. It's not a racing game, but it's also inheriting a uh, legacy franchise. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like a 343 type of thing, you know, from Bungie or something, you know, or Coalition from that. You know, Sans having maybe some people kind of transfer over. But yeah. still, the point stands. And, uh, yeah, I was wondering after I saw the trailer, my first reactions was I thought, are they going to do like how Shrek does and where it kind of covers different fantasy aspects in the yeah. game? And, and, you know, the more I thought about that, that could be awesome. I could be down with that if it's just this beanstalk giant and maybe he's a part of the game or the main villain or 
So if he, you know, awesome, that's fine too. I think kind of like you said, Brian, earlier, you know, like this could be kind of a new approach for them. And I think I am just so open for that because it, we have been so without Fable for 10 years in the ecosystem, 10 plus years, I think, uh, in the ecosystem of Xbox. I'm just so happy to have it back. It looks like it's going to be cool. That gives me a good first impression. I'm happy after three years to just see it. I was initially bummed. My gut reaction, everything I'm saying now is how I feel now, like 10 out of 10 excited. But initially, like gut reaction from the showcase, I was pretty bummed because I thought this is not enough. Like three years and that's all you're really showing. Yeah. I don't really still have a good idea about this game, uh, which I still that still kind of stands. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? There's been so much stuff that I have seen now and had to take in between all the different showcases and directs and forwards and all that stuff in the midst of games that are coming out and whatnot. Uh, it's it's helped me level out with that because I think three years ago and kind of leading up until now with a lot of these games, guys, it was a case of, you know, waiting night and day to hopefully hear an update on some of these games because it felt like the, the gaming field was so dry for releases. It was like we'd get one every now and then because of the pandemic, right? But then it like it wasn't consistent. But this year... This year could, is starting to seem like it could potentially be one of the best years in gaming, maybe. So the fact that that's happening, I'm experiencing that. And then all these showcases had a lot of stuff I was interested in. Uh, it's helped me kind of ease up on that. So I'm just in a position where I'm like, you know what? That's that I like where it seems like they're heading, and I can't wait to learn more. I do wish I knew more about it, but uh, hopefully Starfield and what they did with that is a sign that that's what they're going to approach. That's how they're going to approach some of these big games in the future when it's their time to shine. Uh, but as of right now, looks super fun. And Richo A Richard Aode Aode Aode. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm, sure. I'm sorry for my whiteness, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I I I love that guy. I think he's hilarious. Uh, I love him in the watch especially. So yeah, I'm what's happy. What's kind of cool it. is we, you know since we're so in the dark on this game, we they could spin this some really cool creative ways. What if when it gets to the year of launch and they're prepping us on this, they reveal to us that like the first five, ten minutes of the game is just this entire trailer. Like, this character, this Jack and the Beanstalk stuff, this is not representative of what the whole game is at all. This is just the opening of the game. What if the game opens to, like, you going up the Beanstalk and taking this guy out, and then there's, like, the whole sandwich, like, eating the sandwich on top of the glasses, and that's where the game kicks off. Like, that's where the title card hey, is. Hey, I, I was just going to say, I could get behind that where the camera pans out a little bit, sky, and it pans up to the sky a little bit, and you see down below the city of Albion or wherever it is, yeah, and then Albion. it just says Fable. Yes, thank you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe this, maybe what we're seeing here, this is just, like, the opening. Like, maybe this whole game story has nothing have, to do with it. They'd hire that actor just for the opening, but... Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Or maybe like uh, maybe the game starts with that and it ends up being, oh, well, because of what you've done to this character, it's the events of the story play out. You know what I mean? Like, Also, he talks about heroes in the game a lot. And of course, that's always been what Fable's been about is heroes. Like, maybe something, maybe that's like the narrative, right? Something to do with heroes. Like, uh, maybe it's time that the, because the renowned of heroes and the and the hype of them and the way they're glorified, maybe there's it's Listen, time that, that comes to an end. Because if you remember the first Fable's, so much of that was like how how it's almost egotistical, right? Like take your trophies, run around town, showing off your trophies, mm -hmm. building renown. You go through a town and be like, people are like, oh, so you want chicken chasing then? You know, like just like commenting on your heroics and stuff like that. Maybe this is like a meta narrative on her, on heroes. I'm obviously trying to pull a lot from very little, but what, what do you think, Josh? Listen, man, I think I I I hope you know, and I'm only thinking in my own box, but I hope this ends up being a Shrek smorgasbord of fairy tale things in yeah. there because the only other thing that leads me to believe that could be the case for this game is in there there's a shot of a balverine which they could easily play upon the big bad wolf if they wanted to take yep. some fairy tale things put them in the game give me pinocchio in there you know i'm a real boy give yeah. me you know all kinds of you could have so much fun like if this is essentially like shrek the game in a lot of ways I would be so down for it, you know? Like, I would be so up for it because I, I don't want it to necessarily be wholly like Shrek, even though I, I really love that franchise now. But just take those fantastical elements and kind of take a lot of fairy tale folklore and incorporate it into your own narrative and weave it together. I could have so much fun playing in that type of world. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I would be happy to see Playground Games do that as opposed to maybe try to sort of do a similar narrative to what they've done before so overall i just feel completely open to whatever they want to do 
and I'm excited to see more. It's Josh, good enough. Before the before the showcase, where was your hype? Where is it after? Ten out of ten hype beforehand. After eight. So it eight? okay. And I know that sounds to some people like it's went down, but it's just more so that like it's really just down to. I still don't have a full picture of what this game is, and I was hoping to get that. When you're but at it's a 10, okay. you can only go down, yeah, right? Yeah, it's I mean, okay, though, and that's, I'm still very, very excited. There's so much pretty, pushing that up to an 8. If we're yeah. looking at it on a more positive spectrum, go ahead. Where are you at? I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty similar to you, Josh. I was an 8 out of 10 before I went in. I came out still at an 8 out of 10, right? Like, they kind of met. You know, like, I wouldn't say I was overwhelmed. I wouldn't say I was underwhelmed. I would say, okay, you know, expecting how far out this game probably is, this is kind of what I thought. Yeah. Uh, I think there was like a teeny bit of underwhelmingness when I first watched it because I didn't realize, you know, to the credit of these developers, I didn't realize how much gameplay was actually in that, and so I had felt a little bit of underwhelming. Cool to hear that. Once, but we'll see. Once I realized, we'll I, I actually believe them just because of their pedigree as with the Forza Horizon games and their technology and their scores and everything, like you said. But uh, I want to believe. You know, I come out. Lord Scully, baby. Out, X Files. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I come out feeling very like still on the same level of hype for it as I was before. Maybe as the years go on, they can properly continue to maintain that hype, and then when we get that big direct for Fable, we can be really excited, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Me too.